call the city commission meeting to order for May 4th, 2015. Um, first thing we have is a uh, is, is the uh, invocation. Uh, absent is Bill Kay here for the invocation. Absent that, Chase Lock, would you lead us in the invocation? I will. Do you all pray with me? Lord Heavenly Father, I uh, just pray that you'll bless this meeting, bless this uh, new commission, and and guide us and give us. The, the path to the best leadership possible for the city of El Dorado and continue to bless our community. And Lord, we just lift all those things up in your son Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Next we have pledges, Pledge of Allegiance. Is there anybody from the audience who would like to lead us in pledge? Absolutely. Thank you. Bill? Thank you, Phil McGuire. Thanks. Um, next on our agenda is proclamations. Is there anyone from the audience you'd like to speak? First proclamation is, is the uh, Elder at Elks Lodge National Youth Week. Is there anybody in the audience who'd like to talk to the commission about that? Just briefly about the intro. Sure. Phil McGuire, 341 Village Road, El Dorado. On behalf of El Dorado Elks Lodge 1407, I want to uh, publicly thank the commission and the city of El Dorado for their generous support of our effort. Uh, Elks Kids Safe Night Out is designed to provide children with an opportunity to come out to a drug-free environment and have a lot of fun. Uh, free food, free pop. Uh, if you'd like to come out, we'll be in East Park this year, this Friday evening from uh, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. and come on out and have a great time. We'll have uh, El Dorado Fire, uh, Sheriff's Office, EMS, State Park, Highway Patrol, SCARF, uh, and several other community folks that are interested in doing things with kids. So uh, come on out and join the fun. And again, we thank you for your continued support. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll, sh I'll read the proclamation and, and share this with the public. Proclamation. Whereas the goal of all Elks is to provide a wholesome and character-building environment for boys and girls of every community within our influence and to assist and safeguard America's young men and women during their passage into responsible and rewarding adulthood. And whereas the El Dorado Elks Lodge is one of the leading fraternal organizations which support our local youth activities projects, and whereas the El Dorado Elks Lodge has helped with financial support of the MDA Summer Camp, the Bethlehem House, Special Olympics, Little League Football, Ketch, K-E-T-C-H, bell ringing for the Salvation Army Christmas Kettle, and hosted both Christmas and Thanksgiving dinners for Salvation Army's less fortunate, and whereas the Elks Lodge helped sponsor a national fire safety program, donated to the local fire reserve fundraiser, and helped support Crime Stopper programs, and whereas the El Dorado Elks Lodge sponsors many youth sports and drug education programs, safe night out, and flag day activities. Now therefore, be it resolved that I, Vince Haynes, mayor of the city of El Dorado, do hereby proclaim the week of May 4th, 2015 through May 8th, 2015 as El Dorado Elks Lodge National Youth Week in the city of El Dorado, Kansas, and urge all residents and institutions, public and private, to support all area youth activities programs sponsored by themselves or others. In witness thereof, I hereto set my hand and cause the official seal of the city of El Dorado, Kansas, to be affixed on this fourth day of May 2015.
All right, thank you. Um, next proclamation we have is for the Poppy Month. Is there anybody from the audience who'd like to speak on behalf of Poppy Month? Not that kind of poppy, <laughs> I'm filling in for Diane Chapman, who's at another meeting tonight. And I think probably all of you are familiar with the poppies, but it's a great thing. And we stand on the street corner the whole month of May with these poppies, and we don't sell them. They're a donation only. So if you see us on the corner, help us out, OK? okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Thank you Thank so you. much. OK. Proclamation. Whereas the American Legion Auxiliary adopted the poppy as its memorial flower, which pays tribute to our war dead and aids the living veterans of their families, and whereas the poppy is a memorial for the American war dead as a, is a tradition which began in the years following the First World War, and whereas the contributions are used solely for children and youth and veterans affairs and rehabilitation in our local community. Now therefore I, Vince Haynes, Mayor of the City of El Dorado, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2015 as Poppy Month in the City of El Dorado, Kansas as an ex expression of gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense and the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. In witness thereof, I hereto set my hand and cause the official seal of the city of El Dorado, Kansas to be affixed this fourth day of May, 2015. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next on our agenda is a personal appearance. We have Marlene Avery from the El Dorado Municipal Band. Or a reasonable facsimile thereof. Yeah, exactly. Good evening, I'm Marlene Avery, 219 Hillcrest, um, here in El Dorado. I'm the president of the Municipal Band here in town. Um, this is our 93rd year. The municipal band has been, was started in 1923. Um, actually, I believe it's a boys band, but now they let the girls in. Um, our officers this year are myself as president, Barbara Templin as vice president, Nancy Barnett as our secretary, and Anita <coughs> Sibley as our treasurer. And then we have three members at large. They're Kelly Davidson, Neil Harrison, and then Keith West. Um, our two directors, we have co-directors, each direct five of our concerts. Um, one is John Templin. This is his 23rd year of directing our band. He actually started with the band in 1961. I think we decided a couple of years ago that he's the one who's been with the band the longest. Um, and Stephen Wilson, um, this will be his fourth year of co-directing with us. Um, we have most of our concerts in Forest Park, and they start at 8 o'clock. Um, everyone is invited to come out and enjoy the concert, enjoy the nice weather. It's usually a little cooler by 8 o'clock. Um, we have our first practice this year on the 21st of May, and we started at 7.30. We have our first practice at Butler Community College in room 725. It's the band room if anyone would like to come out and join us. Um, it's open to anyone from starting freshmen on up. Anyone is invited to come out and play with us. Um, we have a few special concerts this year. We have the Flag Day ceremony that we play with the um, Elks, I believe the Ambets and the Legion also are included in that, but that one starts at seven o'clock and that's on Flag Day on the 14th of June. Uh, we have our ice cream social on the 25th of June. It's always a lot of fun. And our bake sale is on uh, July 16th. And our proceeds from that, from both of those things, their free will donations, all of that goes to a scholarship out at Butler. Um, we also will play at the Relay for Life on the 12th of June, and we'll play at 7 o'clock on that one. Um, 
that's about all I have for right at the moment. Any questions? Thank you so much. Any questions for Marlene? Thank you, Marlene. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. We invite you all out and for a wonderful evening with us. Thanks. Thank you. you. All right. Moving along, next thing on our agenda is public comments. Anybody <coughs> from the audience who wish to address the commission? Public comment session. Seeing none, we will uh, close public comment and move to consent agenda. Uh, on our consent agenda, it would be the uh, minutes from our last meeting as well as the appropriation ordinance. Um, these were included in your packet. Are there any questions from our commission on those two items? No, sir. Chance to look at that, Mr. Mayor. I move that the consent agenda, as presented, be approved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Passed five zero. This is a healthy part of our. And Mayor, while you're flipping through, I may mention that um, we've been talking about just putting all that appropriation ordinance online, so showing monthly expenditures just like you receive. If we do that, it'd be my anticipation that we would stop printing it for the budget. Of course, it'd still be in Dropbox. You could get it. But um, in, in an effort to be even more transparent, we just put it online. Okay. Okay. What do you have? Lights? Yeah, why are these lights on? You look um, better in the light, you, Nick. You, if you've watched yourself over the last couple meetings and or I more, have. You, you're very <laughs> fuzzy. And so we're and trying that's gonna something. Help? Uh, we're trying something new this evening. So now we're bright and fuzzy? Right. Okay. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Not we, much we chance turn, of it with those on. We turned the air down a little to help you out with it, hopefully. Okay. I think we ought to vote on this. <laughs> it's not on the agenda. <laughs> and actually, this agenda on. If you don't on, like it, I'm in favor. In re it any be. regularly scheduled meeting, you the agenda is, temper is yeah. tentative. And you can amend it at I any time. I can wait till new business. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in regard to the uh, to the uh, ordinance or the, the expenditures, something that we can talk about more in our upcoming sessions before we post it online. I agree. We want to be as transparent as possible. Possible, and I don't know that printing this every time is yeah. healthy for our trees. But at any rate, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on, um, next thing on our agenda would be a vice mayor. Uh, it's common for uh, our city commission form of government calls for the commission to appoint a vice mayor to serve as mayor in my absence. Um, I think it's protocol, I guess I'll read here, and, and it's a one year term, one year position. Um, for those, uh, those who are, are watching, the previous vice mayors were recognized were David Chapin, Bill Young, Nick Badway, Shane Krause, David Chapin, Steve Reynolds. Those are kind of in the recent past. Um, normal protocol as written here is that the next most senior commissioner take their turn in this. And the, um, it's written here that it's Nick Badway. But I will uh, open, the, open this for discussion to our commission to nominate yourself or someone for vice mayor. Pretty good gig, by the way. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> you're not planning on missing any meetings, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't plan on it, no. Okay. Bad way? Yes. You wanna uh, do it? Sure, I'll do it. I don't have an agenda yet in front of me, so someone else will have to make the proper motion if they don't mind. I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, 
I move to appoint Commissioner McBadway as Vice Mayor for a one year term. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for Nick Badley as Vice Mayor. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor, uh, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Vice Mayor Badway. Thank you. Thank you. Next thing on our agenda is uh, appointments of Advisory board appointments. Um, this is airport. Um, I'll just read through these 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 uh, boards as they're presented to us. Airport three positions. Code of appeals three positions. Zoning appeals one position. Convention and uh, tourism four positions. Eldorado Inc three positions. Eldorado Inc housing two positions. Joint corrections one position. Library three pos four positions. Planning Commission, two positions. Uh, Prairie Trails, three, four, five positions. Regional Economic Development, three positions. Butler County Solid Waste, two positions. And Tree Board, one position. Um, but had a chance to read through these appointments. I'm comfortable with what you see. A motion. Mr. Mayor, we actually have three motions mm -hmm. here. So the first motion will be to change the Prairie Trails Advisory Board from nine members to seven. Correct. Uh, you want that first now? That would work. Mr. Mayor, I move to decrease the number of members on the Prairie Trails Advisory Board from nine to seven. Do you want these voted on independently? Okay. It's been moved and seconded to decrease the number of members on the Prairie Trails Advisory Board from nine to seven. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Mayor, I move to temporarily suspend the Recycling and Solid Waste Advisory Board. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to temporarily suspend the Recycling and Solid Waste Advisory Board. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Do you need to read these, Tabitha? No, as you presented? can say as presented, the copy that was published is correct. The one that I've got in my hand? Um, I'm not sure if that one is, but the one that's that was published is this correct. This is the one that was given to me. I don't know when it was put up there. <laughs> so do we want to recognize these? I mean, that's, I'll read them. If, if, you, if you would like to, you're more than welcome to, or you can say as presented as And did we point out that we discussed all of this at a work session, just for people watching? No. We on. might just point that out real quickly. I mean, the two that we just, uh, past and then this this was all this stuff discussed this past week at a work session but no action was taken but no action, no action was, was taken, taken. And so that's tonight. why we're not talking about it we're just moving through it because we've we have discussed it and we still have available positions on the zoning appeals convention and tourism committee um did el dorado inc get filled el dorado inc got filled so and then one on the tree board as well so still have some available seats if people are interested. So yeah, at this time we could t talk to the general, say to the general public, if you've got an interest in those boards, then we're still taking applications. And if they want to know more about the commitment level and want to see an application, they can go to the city website. Yes, please. Please. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I move to approve the following advisory board appointments for the airport advisory board. Kendra Wilkinson is the ex officio. Colin Rao and Harold Cooper. For the Board of Appeals and Code Review, Dave Stewart, Robbie Pollard, and Sharon Wilkinson. For the Board of Zoning Appeals, Albert Hogaboom. For Convention and Tourism, Rod Seal. 
Andrea Van Aken, Steve Reynolds, Caitlin Berry, El Dorado Inc., Mayor Vince Haynes, Commissioner Greg Lewis, Kim Smith, for El Dorado Inc. Housing, Mayor Vince Haynes, Commissioner Greg Lewis, for Joint Corrections, Miles Erpeldine, for the Library Board, Mayor Vince Haynes, Ex Officio, Judith Cole, Deborah Hill, Nicole Lewis, for the Planning and Zoning Board, Dan Bullock and Sam McVeigh, for Prairie Trails Advisory Board, Brad Demo, <coughs> Commissioner Nick Badway, Ex Officio, Carol Lee, Jake Courier, and Dr. Mark Heidebrett, for REAP, Mayor Vince Haynes, Kirk Bookout, Herb Llewellyn, Butler County Solid Waste, Commissioner Nick Badway, and Brad Meyer, and for the Tree Board, Bill Johnson. Second. All right. I have a motion, a second for appointments to your advisory boards as read by Commissioner Badway. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. <coughs> Next on our agenda is a personal policy change proposal. Herb, you want to address the commission on that? Uh, I can. Um, are you going to do it as a mid manager? Um, <clears throat> what you're going to, what you all are considering tonight, one of the things that we have internally is we like to hire great people and then provide opportunities for advancement. One of the key transitions, especially when you um, start in a frontline position and you advance to management, you you have to quit thinking as a frontline person and you have to think of as a manager. Now your focus is gonna go more towards the organization and its values and um, and so it's a change of philosophy and a change of thinking. So what, what I've created is called the Middle Managers Committee and they take up various issues at various times. Some they generate by themselves and sometimes we ask them to take a look at an issue. Tonight, um, in, in a change, we've never actually had them come and visit with you, but again, a good step in, into understanding your role and um, practicing for becoming the leadership in the staff organization, they're gonna actually talk to you all tonight. We have several of them here tonight. Tab, um, Jason, and Brett, and uh, Josh. And so I think um, Tab's gonna talk. It may be not too much of a stretch for her since she does it routinely to, with y'all. Um, but you have other people here in support of, um, of it and were part of that discussion that led to these um, policy, proposed policy changes. One possible action that isn't um, listed that should be is um, to table and take up at another issue, another time. Um, one of the things that commissions all come to uh, like a lot is time to digest. And so very seldom will we try to put something up in front of you that you don't know about and expect a decision. It's not fair to you. And so um, with three of you being brand new and not familiar with this system at all, and with these being rather significant changes that we've spent two years in staff talking about before we got to a place to even bring it to you for discussion, um, don't, don't feel pressured to approve it tonight unless you all just think, well, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread and we don't know why you haven't been doing it all along. Um, so the, the expectation is that you always are comfortable with something before you vote on it and don't think twice about that. If you're not comfortable, don't vote. It's 
it'll be fine. Not everyone will feel that way. A lot of people will wake up on a Monday and want something in front of you that night, and we do our best to put those off so you can understand them. But um, something like this, there is no urgency other than we've worked long and hard on it. And so um, always keep that in the forefront <clears throat> as you're talking about issues. If you're not comfortable, just say it, and it'll be fine. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, as City Manager Llewellyn said, we've been discussing this for a few years now, um, and it's been on and off over those few years. The most recent Mid-Managers Committee has spent the majority of our last year working on this, uh, the changes for this policy. The current policy set states that uh, employees can take sick leave for themselves or for an immediate family member if they're in the hospital. Uh, the first change that we've suggested is that employees are able to use sick leave if their children are sick but not in the hospital. If they're just home sick, they'll be able to use sick leave for that. So that was one of the primary changes and um, most supported, I believe, by the employees. The second, sorry, the second change included how the sick leave is paid out. We currently do not pay out any sick leave at the end of an employee's term. As a, and what we decided was that um, we wanted to use it as a reward more for those who had been here longer. So what we've done is anyone um, in excess of 500 hours of sick leave can supplement their personal leave for payout upon termination. Right now we pay out 200 hours for any employee who's been here 10 years or less and pay out 260 hours for any employee who's been here more than 10 years. This would allow an employee to use their personal leave if they wanted to and allow them to supplement that uh, pot with the 500 hours that they have in sick leave. So if, for example, an employee had 260 hours of leave and had used 40 hours recently for a vacation, then but then they retired, they would be able to still get paid out that 260 if they had over 500 hours in sick leave available at that time. And those vacations are capped. Those numbers are the cap. Until you work for the city 10 years, you can only accrue 200 hours. So um, lots of staff routinely lose it. And you've probably all heard the term use it or lose it. That's the way the city is. And so um, what's being proposed is that if, if you took vacation before you left, that you could fill in some of the blanks with anything in excess of 500 hours. And those, and even sick leave is capped. Seven, 720? For? For everyone, I believe. Not fire. In fire, fire. Oh, sorry. Fire, fire, fire is a thousand eight. So, what? And so, sick leaves the same way. Use it or lose it. And um, what this is saying is, is if you have over five hundred hours in the bank, and you do not have your maximum amount in the bank for vacation or personal leave, you could fill up your personal leave with some of your sick time if you're in excess of five hundred. Our final proposed change, as I stated before, we pay out 200 hours for anyone here 10 years or less. We currently pay out 260 hours for anyone over 10 years. Our committee thought that anyone who had put in over 20 years um, had earned a little extra, and so we have, a, we have proposed that they are to be paid out 325 hours. Susie, um, included a spreadsheet with your information this evening and it showed what the budgetary effects of that would be. Um, we have very few employees who have been here 20 years or more. Well, actually we, we have more than what I think most people have, but we do have um, 13 actually that have been here more than 20 years at this point. So um, she gave you the estimated effect on the budget for those employees and um, if they were to if they were to retire maxed out on all their leave uh, 
as Herb said, this went through the mid managers committee and we took it to the department heads. The department heads gave us some suggestions. We went back to our committee, um, did a little bit more work and it went back to the department heads. They have agreed with the current proposal and so we are here for you this evening. And like Herb said, there are a couple ways this can go. You can um, send it back to us again and we'd be happy to look at it some more. Uh, you can approve it as presented or you can approve it with amendments this evening. Um, we, as Herb said, we're all, we're, there's four of us here that can answer questions and we're, we'll be open for those now. I have a couple questions, Tabitha. Sure. Uh, when you talk about immediate, immediate family member, mm -hmm. what exactly are you speaking of? A family member within the household is, I believe, how it's defined in our personnel manual. Okay, so, so if a uh, grown son or daughter is taking care of a parent and the parent does not live in the household but is in seriously ill. I, I don't believe that situation's addressed currently in our personnel policy. I think at, at that point it would be up to Herb and the department head to but decide. It's not, it's today. would have to just be a day off with no pay. Well, personal. Personal day. You could take okay. personally. And so what the, and in fact, it's to, today, if um, Scott's son was sick, For the immediate family member? I think that's just bereavement. I, I think we'll we, we said it. immediate we, we household. What, what it is, and Tab could very well be right. Okay. But it's in, in the house. Second question. It says payment upon termination. That is a very negative word. Very oh, negative. It, it makes it sound like you got rid of them. And if you got rid of them, then why are you paying them all this money? We need to find a positive word. We could do that. That's not a problem. Okay. That, that's all for me. Ter yeah, termination implies that they've been fired. Yes. Yeah. Why are we paying them? And then why would we be having a benefit for someone we felt like we needed to terminate? I kind of agree with that. Explain to me also personally if it's the same thing as vacation. And under this policy, I mean, you have vacation days. We're just calling them personal days. So under, so under existing policy, if an employee has a sick child and they stay home with that sick child, that's not covered on, with sick leave. They have to take PTO, correct? Right. Okay. How does your FLA work? How much do you what? pay on the FLA if they have to take? We pay out what they have in leave. What, what they have so they pay they can use sick leave and personal leave to cover FL you're talking FSLA yeah okay FLMA, FMLA. sorry FLMA. FMLA. 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 I'm mixing up my letters yes um, they can take what they have on the books and then they're able to take up to 12 weeks yes 12 weeks but we we don't have to pay for all of it if they don't have the leave to cover it that's that's where you're under that would would be where the scenario that Kendra is talking about would be a would be a, a, parent. a parent or something <laughs> that's not of the household, which you could take that, but it would be within your personal leave days that you'd be able to, or not or uh, unpaid leave. Is that if it's extended? Is that correct? And, had, and the act simply guarantees their job is there when they come back. Correct. Right. So if they don't have enough money or on their leave, then they'll lose their insurance even though they're still on this, or do you continue to pay their insurance? That's a Herb question. And, and I can't answer that off the top of my head. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I, 
I know that while you're on it, you're accruing just like you were at work. Mm -hmm. So you're accruing vacation, you're accruing sick. Um, I don't I don't know if you continue to pay benefits. Benefits, I to, yeah. I have to look that up. I don't know that off the top of my head. If the law addresses it, then you need to follow it. Okay. And I feel comfortable saying that. You guys think about the payout I mean I'm pretty in favor I mean I guess I'm just not sure where that all what I think about the payout not that I'm against it but I might need to that's the part that I might need to digest a little bit I mean to me it sounds like I don't initially have an issue with the change I mean with the immediate family members I think that's appropriate if you have a child that's sick and you being able to use that I'm I'm okay with that. It's the payout part that I'm not sure about. Well, obviously, someone that's accrued 500 hours of sick leave isn't abusing their sick leave. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's that's pretty obvious. So, um, and I've realized we're not gonna we're not gonna come up with a policy that's gonna cover every scenario. There, yeah. You're always gonna there's always gonna be something to pop up that you had. Oh, we didn't think of that. But then at that time, then. The city manager manages, I assume. So, and and that uh, there are special circumstances that come up that I'll absolutely process because we have a policy that can't fit everything, and so there have there have there have been times when um, we let an employee run into the red. That's primarily someone that's new to the city that's um, a great employee and we'll have a conversation you, you can always if you have a serious illness and you deplete your sick time we have a program that allows other people to donate time that was my next question and so we do that and um, it's also um, discretionary with the city manager and um, we, we have had the the vast majority of those were approved but I know we've had some that I've not approved um, if you call in sick once a month when you get your one day of sick time so you have a leave balance of zero and then you get then you really get sick um, uh, I've not allowed it to, to be done. So there is discretion built into some of your policies and and uh, so they can be addressed on a date, on a specific Another issue. question I might have uh, in the memo that we got concerning this, it talks about uh, the tracking for supervisors approving time cards will be simplified. Um, actually, I saw that today when I was reviewing, and that was for a previous proposal, and I think Susie forgot to take it out. So that should be just it, it, X'd out? Yeah, it was with an original proposal that, that combined paragraph. the sick and personal leave into one pot. So, yeah, that... that the, whole, the whole paragraph? Yeah. Okay. It could still be somewhat easier for supervisors because now, for right now, I have to say, were you sick or was your kid sick? when I do time cards, and, and in this case, if they say I had a sick day, I can just use it. And I think, Chase, to your point about um, the payout, so you understand the included in it is what everybody else does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a tremendous number of our peers pay between a third and, and a half, and so there's a, a lot of peer cities that pay it out. And a lot around here um, so when the discussion started several years ago that's where it started and so the whole this concept was I think um, the mid managers 
recognition that that's a lot of money that's currently not in a budget and in a, in a time where there's certainly a lot more scrutiny over uh, employee benefits that mm -hmm. may not be a, a, an appropriate ask. And so um, I think that's how you got to this, but that's where it started. Yeah. It started as, as to be, we looked at our peers. And I assumed that that was probably where you all got to start. The majority of the employees that we pay out at the end, they, the ones that this is going to maybe help a little, they, they're, most of them are at their max anyway, and so we're already paying it out. It, the major effect on the budget has to do with that over 20 years group, and then, and again, we'll be able to budget that. This won't go into effect until the first of 2016, um, and then we'll be able to budget, because most of us know when someone's planning to retire, and so we're, we're able to plan for that a little bit, a little bit better than if someone were to just leave the city. My initial thoughts in just reading this, this past Sunday and then hearing a little bit more, I mean, I'm definitely interested in taking care of our employees, especially the folks that have been here 10 plus years, 20 plus years, because we've had the issue of turning over folks and we want folks to stick around and, you know, feel like they've been heard. And, and so my, my initial thoughts is, are that I'd probably be in favor of something like this and kind of some of the proposed changes, but I'd also be up for exploring other options if you guys were wanting to, um, or if you guys needed more time to digest it. Well, as husbands and wives share parenting roles, they need something mm -hmm. to take care of their kids because the wife's not always going to be there. So the husband's going to have to take over. And again, I think that the family member thing to me seems like a no brainer, <coughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's not, but it was the payout stuff that I was more unsure of. But if we've looked at our peers and, and again, if we're really looking out for the, the folks that are sticking around, that is the plan. I'm leaning towards, I want to do what we can to help them out. And I want to see termination change to exiting. Okay. I mean, that's a good fit for that. Or, or, or what something. What do you think, Kendra? I'm just thinking that I want the termination. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Other, yeah. Otherwise, I understand. Uh, Education is the same way. Yeah. We do that in, in school districts, the payout at the end. So I understand where so you're coming from. That's fairly similar? Yeah. Okay. okay. See, and that's what I've been curious about, and just the similarity to what this compares to others. And if, if it's comparable and fair, then I think it's appropriate. Let me ask, you know, I, I, as, as having some employees that and recently in my own company changing the policy to eliminate some accrual of sick time so that when you exit you're not um, <clears throat> I, I've been on the other side of this coin so I, I guess under that rate when you start to understand that you've got an employee that's not abusing sick time and are, are a good employee um, in lieu of waiting till the end of the road and dangling a carrot of if you stick around we'll pay you a little bit more with your sick is there a way that we can just simply compensate them better while they're here and not and get away from this in leaving reward? One of the things I've done in a different city was we actually did a tiered thing and it said if you use no sick time in a year, you got three days pay or three days comp time. If you used one, you got two. If you used two, you got one. And after that, it was a wash. And so that was the approach that we took in that city. And it was... Um, and it and it was appreciated by staff, and so we have. So I, this is not the it, only what, way. Was to was that was that scenario talked about by the staff? Or do you know we, that committee? That committee? We, did they? Did you have that discussion about alternative than, than to the payouts on what kind of rewards or or acknowledgement for for being a healthy employee? We did. We talked about some rewards that we could give, um, including days off. Um, some other prizes 
we also talked about paying them a, a certain amount um, for any days that they might that they hadn't taken or something and this was the least effect on the budget and that's what we were looking for this year okay and, and maybe just to put in perspective this payout you know you keep talking about I guess if if I I'm maxed out so if I left the city you know mm -hmm. into this week I have 260 hours of vacation time billed out so that's getting paid out to me mm -hmm. as a policy is today well, at the vacation, I guess, do we consider sick leave a benefit or an entitlement? It is not. A, it is absolutely a benefit, and we have absolutely not given it before. If, 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 if we question the sickness, mm -hmm. we have the right to make you see a doctor and give <clears> us a report. And I, and I know we've had department heads deliver chicken soup to their um, ill employees just to make sure they're home and because they love them. Sure. So, so it, it, it can absolutely be abused. I mean, there's not a thing in the world that stops someone from picking up the phone saying I'm sick and, and it happens. Well. But, but in that we scenario, they're, they're either they're using it. We've offered it as a benefit, and right. they're simply using it. it. They really don't fit into this payout discussion that we're talking about because they're right. using their sick time. Right. Um, and they may not have it when they need it. That's that's right. the gamble they're they're taking with the benefit that we are offering. And I think the most common scenario is just like Scott said. Mm -hmm. Our <laughs> good employees are maxed out on leave, and the only time they're not is when they've actually been sick or they've actually just taken vacation. But, I mean, I had to calculate mine last year how much I lost because I was maxed out and it was, it was a big number. But, you know, it's just the way it is. I think there is maybe only two, three employees in this room that are not maxed out right now. Or within a payday or two of being maxed. And it could be all of us are. I'm not really sure. Looking at Other question, and this may be from left field, so I apologize in advance. Um, is there a department that generally sees a higher, we're not talking about the employee that abuses, let's get off of that topic. Is there a department that generally sees a higher use of sick time? Where I'm headed with this is somebody who is in that department and needs their sick time, but still puts in 20 plus years is now being, now seeing somebody who is in a department that doesn't need sick time so much and that, that kind of exposure and they, they just do kind of unfair treatment, wouldn't you think? I don't is there, know is there a department looked. that sees that kind of, I, again, left field, I don't know. Um, we have looked, or no? Sorry, Sorry I'm, looking at, at, that, I'm looking at I, Brett, he's been here longer. I think I, we know. track it, and, <clears> and so I guess I'd say no. Off the top of my head, I'd say, that most, most of our employees are healthy and so don't, but, but we, we've been having babies well. and, uh, and that has taken some time and, uh, and then we've had some, we've had some health problems and so the, it, I'd say biggest drain would be a severe health issue that the one and two days are seasonal yeah. and, okay. and, and t tied to the flu or something. And so. Yeah, I just know where there was a department that generally saw a higher use of sick time, whether you even tracked it. And then the fact that that employee would then struggle getting that max. Maybe some of our outdoor employees get a have a few more, is what I'm hearing from over here, are and ones that work in the water when it's cold and wet outside anyway, so. And then you raised a question that I didn't even think about till you just said it. How does maternity leave fit into all of this? Is it a different leave altogether? No, it, it comes out of your sick and personal so leave. So a female employee has probably could struggle getting to that max, yeah, potentially. I, 
I have one right now that she will use everything she has and and not quite have enough to get through her maternity leave this year. And we've had, and we have loaned, I know that I've had a, one or two that, that I've lent them run in the red, good employees, and so they went in the red to have a child. Yeah. And with the mm -hmm. ensuing um, staying home, and um, and then uh, most recently had one that um, worked, did some work at home w after the birth, and so we. <laughs> I think that we are changing the way we look at the world in positive ways to employees. We had a, I think one of your mid managers um, recently was like, I'm babysitting today. If you want me, you're getting my son. And it was like, bring him. And so you, it will not be that un. Un it won't be surprising to see infants around here some. And it's something we've been talking about um, with Susie as well. So, like my employee, she, she'll be able to bring her baby. And, I mean, Susie's a great example. Yeah, Susie. If you. given the choice of Susie and Wells or, or no Susie, I took Susie and Wells. And... He didn't seem to cause any so problems. So basically, pregnancy leave is just taken out of whatever accumulated sick leave you have. Mm -hmm. It's for all employees, mm -hmm. salaried and hourly. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's an issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, I think we've got some some fairness issues to deal with. That's a. I mean, yeah, you brought up a good point with the maternity stuff. <clears throat> and I think also in looking at this. Um, the spreadsheet provided that some of the nomenclature I'm going to need some training on it says city of employees years of service based on DOH. I'm not sure I know what that stands for. And then am I, am I looking at a, 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 the second sheet, which has a sum at the bottom, I don't want to scare anybody, but some at the bottom of $125,000. Is that assuming all these employees left in that calendar year? In one year. Yes. And that would not happen. Wouldn't probably not happen. I just wanted to make sure what the assumption was. Okay. Yeah. And DOH is date of hire. Date of hire, thank you. <clears throat> I would, let me ask another question before you. If, if we table this tonight, what is the process for bringing it back in front of the commission? Does it just go on to the next agenda to be acted on and tabled again? Is it, is yeah. it in perpetuity till we act on it, or what's, what's it, the process? It, it can be anything. And it's really up to the commission. This is really the first time the commission has heard this. And so um, it, if no one liked it, then you could just say, yeah, we're not interested in this at this time and you'd never see it again. If you thought you wanted to make changes, you'd tell us what you thought they were. If you wanted us to look at some other issue or in addition to or, and even split this thing up, it sounded, it sounds like one and three are like there's a consensus on them and that the issue that that kind of struggling with right now is the payout and so um, and then now maternity leave I guess and so um, I'd actually want to I'd want the first step of a maternity discussion to be to tell you what we currently do so yeah. you all understood. I'd like that. Because yeah. it's boys or girls can take it. I right. Mean it's, um, so in that way it's the same but you I, I know it, we pay it with if you get paid it's mm -hmm. personal or okay. sick. I know that. So you can do it's it's whatever <coughs> your, your desire is. If you just wanted time to think about it and digest it and come back in two weeks and so you've had more time to think about it and maybe formulate some strategies or some opinions, do that as well. And it, it's really completely up to you and 
however you want to drive this issue. What's well, the pleasure of the commission? I got another question for, for you. It says regular as fire. Does police fall with fire on uh, 320 or are they at the regular? Police is at the regular amount. I'd be fire up. different. The Fair Labor Standard Act treats fire differently and even treats police different of how many hours you can get in a pay period before and in overtime. Our fire department um, uses, by, pay, by going 24 hours, they are going to get overtime two, two out of three paydays, is that right? And so, so their sick time their vacation time is, is um, a different schedule and it's because of the 24 hour work day. Okay. Police are doing, are still just work, though primarily 12 hour shifts, they just work 80 hours in a pay period. And so their accumulated rates are the same as everybody else. It's just fire that's the exception in, uh, in vacation. Their pregnancy leave is the same as our policy. You only paid your sick leave and your vacation time. And if you go over that, then you, you, you can go to 12 weeks, but right. after that, it, it stops after you run out of hours. Right. And so that's but common there. But I do, th I do think that um, I, I cannot imagine a city letting anyone go at the end of 12 weeks of the Family Medical Leave Act because we can. That's not the organization that we are. And so, um, no, we want, we, we hire people and they're having babies and we're happy. So. I but would disagree. I, I don't know what I, I mean. The policy it is a policy. And it, I don't and disagree. Oh, I, <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. The double negative. But um, so we've had, I think, some great discussion. I guess I would like to know what the pleasures of the commission are. I would suggest that we table it just for the sake of a little bit more clarification. And then, uh, I mean, I think we're on to something good. I mean, I don't think we're in total disapproval of it but just for the sake of clarification and a few few things and then possibly if someone has something specific they know they want the committee to explore if we could email and get a consensus and make that direction before that be appropriate sure could we wait till the next meeting till the next month how long do you want to take it I, I mean i'd be fine with two weeks just to get in touch with what I need. I'm fine with two weeks, and I, and I, and I think have this topic you on our next. Tabitha, just a few our, yeah. our next mid-managers meeting is actually a week from this Thursday. Um, so, so writing an agenda item in a couple hours' time um, won't okay. be different. And I'm not, I'm not sure we would all be available to meet before then, but we can see if it's possible, and if so, it could well, get on in two there's weeks. There's no sense. There's no sense killing yourselves. So yeah. you want to do it our first meeting in June? That that would be very possible. Well, and I guess I'd right. like to have this at least an item on our next work session just in case there's some discussion we want to have about it. Sure. And maybe some clarification on yeah. maternity stuff. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I move we table this item until our first June meeting. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to table this item. Uh, any further discussion? I would say thank you to the committee for the work and for the information. Um, again, I, I echo Chase that I think it's 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 in a good direction. I'm yeah. um, pleased with what I was seeing in general. But so, any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero to table. Thank you. Thank you for your work, folks. <coughs> Next item on our agenda whoops, is uh, aerial fire truck fire fire truck aerial fire truck lease agreement resolution. Mr. Mayor and Commission, our 
uh, at the last meeting, you approved a bid from Intrust Bank for the lease agreement on the aerial fire truck. They require a resolution stating that we will not go over our uh, $10 million limit that allows us to get bank qualified interest rates. So um, this, that is all this resolution is. And so if you have any questions, I will take them. Do you want to understand that a little better? Or have you heard that before? The ten million dollar item. Go ahead and explain that. Okay. Um, cities can issue up to ten million dollars of general obligation debt every year. If we go over ten million, it's no longer like a municipal and and not having interest, uh, not being subject to taxation. You go over 10 years subject to taxation on the profits. So <clears throat> what interest is wanting, their bid is based on us, on the people that own this debt not paying income on it, income taxes on it. And so they want to make sure we're not going over the $10 million cap. Did you assure them of that? We did. We did. We and, be with but this resolution but we weren't sure quite. Right? we weren't quite the level of assurance they wanted so it's here tonight and and so you know we we do plan on issuing a bond next month maybe this um, I believe we're about 60 days out from the bond issuance and we are also issuing a temporary note this year but all three items added together we were still well under our 10 million so there you go What's the resolution how are we gonna do 2760 I move to approve resolution number 2760 and enter into the lease agreement with Interest Bank for the aerial fire truck. I'll second that. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Now, Tabitha, we had talked earlier that Items six, seven, and eight were to be coupled. Is that together? Uh, seven, eight, and nine. Seven, eight, and, and nine. Excuse and me. Yes, Scott's going to present those to you as one item, and then um, if you, when you read the motion, if you will just add projects three fifty four. What are my project numbers? Four sixteen and four seventeen. If you'll say all three projects in one motion, that would be great. Yes, Mayor and Commissioners. These three projects, Project 354 was a repaving of Atchison Street from Locust to Cave Springs and Cave Springs Atchison to Denver. This project was accomplished utilizing sales tax fund. Um, the remainder, remaining cost of the improvement district was for driveways and <coughs> of the actual cost of curb and gutter replacement. Project 416 is the <coughs> paving of Fourth Avenue from School Road to Boyer Road, and Project 417 is the paving of Fifth Avenue from School Road to Boyer Road. What we're asking you to do tonight is setting to set a public hearing for May 18th at 7 p.m. and um, consider proposing um, the proposal of the assessments and spreading the cost of the specials. Mr. Mayor, I'll move to set the public hearing for 7 p.m. on May 18, 2015 to be held for the purpose of considering the proposed assessments of the cost of project number 354, 416, and 417, and further direct individual mailings to each owner liable for the special assessments. Second. Second. Beat you to it, Kendra. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Thank you. So look forward to a public hearing on the seventh of, on at seven o'clock May eighteenth. Right. <clears throat> well, that's goes through our agenda. We're down to new business. And open this. This is the time we open up to the commission for your new business to be brought forth. I can go real quick. Go ahead. Kendra. No, go ahead. Well, I just, I don't have anything official, Mr. Mayor, but I will 
go ahead and uh, real quickly encourage folks that this Thursday, I know you are going to remind me, but I, at 7 a.m. is the mayor's prayer breakfast. Um, it's $10 a ticket, and it's at the Civic Center. <laughs> I'm looking at Tabitha. She's just feeding it to me. Uh, 7 a.m., $10 a ticket at the Civic Center. Um, it's a great event, just kind of lifting up our community and bringing everyone together for a, a nice kind of quick morning before everyone goes to work. And so you can make reservations through the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I encourage folks to attend if interested. So that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like the commission to consider the possibility of starting commission meetings at 6.30 as opposed to 7 o'clock. I will say, from my standpoint, I don't have a conflict with that, but I also, it's just me. I don't have a family, so that'd be more for you, you family guys, but I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't have a problem with it either. That's what the planning commission thinks. So. I'm cool with it. Does that work with your schedule? I don't have a problem with it. Um, no, it's fine by me. I mean, what what do we need to do to to move forward with that? I think six thirty is fine. Gets us started a little earlier. And so you know, um, it is set by ordinance. If I'm hearing five commissioners want to do this, so we'll, the next meeting will start at six thirty. We will call it a special meeting because you can have them whenever you want, and um, and then. On that special meeting agenda will be the ordinance to change it to 630, and we'll do that. So, no problem. Thank you. Well, you got it. Mr. Man, Mark, that was pretty easy. Yeah, the only other thing I have to say is baskets of flowers look awesome downtown. Yep. I noticed those this afternoon. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I'm going to, I need you to go back to the last agenda item where Chase read the wrong the thing. time for the next public hearing and we will need to change that motion to read 6 30. Can, can we have our special meeting at 6 30 and then have the public yes, hearing at 7? Yeah. Yes if you can. If you would like to that Let's will just work leave too. that motion alone. And okay. Yeah I, do that. I can't help but think you'll be here that long. I'm, <laughs> good chance. Okay. Is that okay Tabitha? Uh, as far as I am aware yes. Cool. <clears throat> I actually got three things. Uh, I had some people come up and ask me about the trash cans, lifting them into the back of the truck. If they could jiggle them when they get them up there on the top to make the stuff fall out. Because a lot of them are being set back down and still got about half full. Sure. And then the, another one was at Summit and Central, can you mark the crosswalks? They're kind of faded, people can't see them in the dark. Yep. And then, South Haverhill by the college. Can you make that a turn lane to go into the college? Because cars are darting around, the truck's trying to get to the refinery, and somebody's going to get run off into the ditch down there. Because they're trying to get to the stoplight, and they try to take off and beat the truck, and it where it goes into oh, one lane. That that intersection is actually county. And it's in the plans to make it go five lane all the way. The, the county has been trying for the last few years to get some funding available in partnership with the city uh, in, in the refinery and some of those other businesses along Haverhill Road to make some improvements to Haverhill south of Tawanda Avenue. Um, but everything that is in Haverhill south of Tawanda Avenue is all maintained by the county and owned by the county. Well, they were saying that the cars are turned into college and the cars dart, dart in front of the semi trucks too as they're headed towards the refinery. And it's kind of dangerous with the big trucks. They can't stop us now. I think they've got something like, and, and I'm just gonna, I'll probably get this number wrong, but it was five to six million dollar project they're trying to find funds for, so wow. to, to improve that. That's and, all it would do, and it would do that, yes. <clears throat> Thank you. All I was going to say was uh, we're getting towards the end of the school year, and I know 
there seems like there's different days where there aren't, kids aren't in school, so probably be a good idea to start training yourselves now to start watching for these little ones because especially when they first get get out of school, they're pretty pretty tickled to be out of there and they're probably not the most cautious when crossing the streets and I've just noticed a lot of pretty small ones out running around so keep an eye out for them and that's all I have. Great. Thank you. I don't have anything to add tonight. Um, city manager's report. Herb, you want to share? The only thing I really wanted to say is kind of um, fun. Tomorrow is Cinco de Mayo and Taco Tuesday. And I was told that only happens every 70 years. So um, <laughs> for lunch plans tomorrow, you know, we may all go to the bowl and Are you mind. serving tacos here to the employees? Actually, I was waiting. I didn't know where we were going with <laughs> Well, actually, we are. You out there in the, like, in the, in the like public works garage or something? City Hall? <laughs> I make, and I learned it at Haskell, they're called Navajo tacos. And we are having Navajo tacos here tomorrow, as I was I, I reminded this m earlier today. So, when I get home tonight, I will be making the fry bread. I will fry it tomorrow. I'm just going to make the dough tonight, and we will have <clears throat> Navajo tacos at City Hall tomorrow. Well, as someone who has had the, the tacos at Grizzly Bowl, I'd rather go that route. They, well, they have you ever had my Navajo tacos? Yeah, well, no, is that an open invitation tomorrow come, at City Hall? <laughs> come. Lunch. Well, the Grizzly Bowl tacos are killer. No, so I agree with if that. You never had. One, if I wasn't, if I wasn't, if I wasn't making lunch here, two, I would be a Grizzly two. Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had, Mayor. Thank you. Every seventy years, it's like Howie's Comet or something. You know. <laughs> okay. Um, next thing on our agenda is executive session. How much time do we need? I think 15 minutes. Mr. Mayor, I move to recess into executive session for the purpose of discussing legal matters and to reconvene at 8.30. 8 second. Okay. It's been moved and second to move into executive session until 8.30. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. All right, five motion carries five zero.